back to another video feature of the Immersive Girls Handbook. Today I am in uh, Singapore at the famous, or for me famous, uh, Ha Park Villa. And uh, I'm going to take you inside this interesting space that is um, somewhat hard to describe, but it's a, it's a space that I think exemplifies uh, ideas of um, dark theming. And uh, let's take a look inside and I'll give you a tour of a space that uh, I think has a no other uh, in the world. So let's uh, go inside. As you can see here, as we're entering, um, you know, there is a uh, front gate, as you can see, just like uh, any other theme park. And um, I guess as, as I'll be showing you, not attractions in a traditional sense as far as rides, but certainly a lot that uh, challenges um, museum type spaces, as you will see here. And here's a map just like a theme park map. So it has the different areas of Chinese mythology, gods of happiness, wealth, and longevity, immortals, virtues, and vices, and I will be showing you many, many of these, including the Ten Courts of Hell. And here's a bit of the history of um, Harpa Villa, which was once called Tiger Bomb Gardens. And you can actually see here uh, one of the plaques that describes that particular history. Again, to give you some of this background because I, I think it does help a bit. Um, originally known as Tiger Bomb Gardens, uh, Harpar Villa was built in 1937. And there are two Burmese Chinese brothers, Abun Ha and Abun Par, and thus we get the name Harpar Villa from them, who uh, originally designed this venue that was focused on teaching traditional Chinese values. And the site actually was was purchased in 1935. Now, over the years, of course, the um, park has seen significant changes. Certainly during uh, World War II, uh, what happened in terms of the uh, the Japanese in Singapore, and uh, many years later, um, there were attempts to reinvest in the park and to modernize it and so forth. In fact, in 1986, there was an attempt to spend, or or it was spent, 30 million dollars focused on modernizing it and I had read online that there was an attempt to create a um, Eastern Asian Disneyland where you could take the you know technological imagineering approaches of, of Disney and those types of theme parks and merge it with Eastern mythology and one of the things you see throughout the park and in these exhibits is an emphasis on teaching uh, Confucianism or other Eastern values or religions um, in, in a very moral sense, right? So you, you get um, a, a clear sensibility here that there was an effort of the designers and operators to teach people uh, lessons and certainly many themed immersive spaces do this. Uh, Disney does it of course in some um, maybe less indirect ways but also some direct ways as well just different value systems of course are being stressed in a theme park like Disney and, and this theme park. And I should say, I guess philosophically, if you um, Google Harpa Villa and, and look it up online, many people refer to it as a theme park. And it's something I, I struggle with, I think, throughout my studies of theme parks is exactly what constitutes a theme park. And there are so many loose definitions. Certainly, as I showed you with the map, um, you could say because there is a sense of different lands and different spaces that obviously has that sensibility of a theme park. Um, at the same time, you might say there aren't rides and some of the immersive attractions that we typically associate with theme parks. And then an interesting thing is, in 1988, the Singapore Tourism Board actually took over Tiger Bomb Gardens and renamed it Har Par Villa Dragon World. And so there was an, you know, an effort to still focus on the two brothers and what they created, but also an effort to modernize it, restore, um, and, and try to uh, place emphasis on making it um, more special. And then over time, uh, beginning I think in, in 2001, uh, they decided to um, actually not charge admission. And so it, in another sense, you could say as a, uh, a theme park, it also does defy that uh, traditional uh, definition because you're not of course charging admission and making money uh, as you might in the theme park. And the other curious thing that I noticed um, during my visit at least, I didn't see a single person who would say be a staff person or anyone operating anything. As you'll see in these many attractions, dioramas, uh, still life, uh, massively creative and artistic displays, but nothing of the sense of uh, you know a theme park in terms of something that has to be managed and operated 
uh, in a real-time sense. So let's take a look at a few more of the attractions here at Harpa Villa. And as you can see from some of my video here, um, this space at Harpa Villa is probably unlike any other that uh, you might expect. It, it defies, uh, I think, our typical understandings of what we would expect to see in a museum or in a theme park or any other type of immersive space. And just look at these severed heads there on the right. You see many, many examples of this throughout the space in which you are presented with very gruesome and, and grotesque uh, figures from mythology and other narratives and stories. And I was recently reading uh, an interview with some of the artists behind some of these amazing creative works. And uh, this one individual was saying that even though Harpa Villa today appears dated and nostalgic and so forth and somewhat rustic certainly with some of the upkeep, uh, this serves an important purpose in terms of preserving uh, a sense of time of contemplation. And as you're drawn into some of these gruesome and interesting stories and narratives and mythological uh, cosmologies, I guess you could say that the emphasis here is on slowing down time, on getting us to contemplate and think about things as opposed to viscerally moving through an attraction as we might um, in a theme park space. And I guess a, another thing I would talk about here is in showing these rather gruesome and grotesque features to us and stories and narratives, perhaps it offers a lesson for us about the typical way in which storytelling or narrative is approached in themed and immersive spaces. In the Disney sense, of course, everything is cleaned up and sanitized and we're not told any dark periods of history or culture or whatever. So I think in the case of Harpaw Villa, there's an emphasis here on getting us to think about some realms of life that are unsavory and perhaps thus going back to this notion of the importance of using the time in this space as a form of contemplation. Here you can see quite exciting we have um, a bit of memory of the old park when it was Tiger Bomb Gardens as you can see in this bench. Pretty cool. And I've mentioned in another video feature that in this uh, amazing Tashin book uh, fantasy worlds in which they focus on spaces like this from around the world, um, and you can see the images from the text here. Actually, what's interesting is in this text, they refer to Harpaw Villa as um, Asian kitsch. And I think this is somewhat unfortunate because it seems to me to be expressing um, you know, a normative value statement about the theming, and I think this, in a sense, could be culturally insensitive. Now, interesting here, this is a historic image, and I'm so disappointed that this still doesn't exist at the park. So what you can see there on the left is there used to be this giant uh, dragon head, and then there was actually a small um, uh, river here that went through the park and I guess presumably went through the dragon head. And this area today, as you'll see from some of my videos later, is entirely uh, covered up. So I think it's, it's unfortunate because looking at this visually, I think it is quite striking and, and remarkable to look at. And as I've mentioned previously, this particular park or space has undergone radical transformation over the years and certainly we will see likely additional changes uh, into the future. And you can see coming up here, one of the things I find so fascinating about this space is they have these surrealistic abstract sculptures that are in some cases earth or plant-like but you know not quite realistic and rather surrealistic and the only thing it reminds me of is um, sort of a grotto um, if you've ever seen constructed grottos of folk artists often eccentric folk artists will create something of this scale and I just find it to be um, just so stimulating aesthetically to look at I mean it, it absolutely has a surreal quality to it that uh, it's hard to describe, so you have to definitely come here and visit the space yourself. And so here I'm taking you through um, some of the mini spaces in Harpaw Villa. And uh, on my uh, day of visit, I spent um, well over, I think, two to three hours here. Um, hot and, and muggy day, and, and you could maybe hear in some of the background sounds of my video, um, you know, the insects and the crickets chirping and so forth. Like a lot of other spaces in Singapore, Harpa Villa certainly is one in which you you see the integration of the natural world um, and um, the material culture and architecture that they've created um, from the from the cultural side of things. And I, I guess what really struck me 
in, in visiting, in addition to, you know, what I call this surreal sense of immersion where they're showing us dark things or things that are unexpected in terms of our consciousness, there is this incredible sense of artistry. And I have to say, I've never seen dioramas and, and uh, sculptures and statues and, and scenes like these ever before. And in this sense, there is an overall, I think, distinctive and very uh, consistent design aesthetic that you see throughout this space. And in that sense, it's entirely remarkable because I think a lot of times today, we go to a theme park or any sort of theme space, and because of the emphasis on branding and consumerism, the design aesthetic is already established for us prior to the folks who are imagining this in the themed or immersive space. An example of this is watching a video on um, comparative theming at Universal Studios Singapore. And you'll note there there's an entire future world, or I think it's actually called Sci-Fi City. And a lot of that is governed by two design aesthetics, that of Transformers and that of Battlestar Galactica. And in that sense, I think, unfortunately, a lot of the creativity is stripped out of attractions before they're even created because the expectation is when you're creating that uh, branded or previously uh, created consumer product within the theme space, uh, the expectation it has, is, is it has to be consistent to what's already gone before. And I think in this sense, it's highly unfortunate that that uh, facet tends to dominate so many themed and immersive spaces. Again, you look at the image there, I mean, just so many of these are absolutely uh, surreal and, and unexpected in terms of what we would uh, think about when visiting any space. And I'm taking you through as well here, um, some of these, these grotto-like structures, what I found quite curious and, and immersive actually, is you walk through these subterranean, these, these caverns, and you really do get this sense of being enveloped by this environment, which to me at times had this feel of, you know, an alien environment of something that I might expect, uh, you know, from the designs of H.R. Giger or something like this from Alien, certainly different in terms of how it looks, but that feeling of being surrounded by these um, structures here, these, these cavernous structures, I, I found that to be quite um, remarkable and strange and surreal at the same time. I was walking through a lot of these spaces and the fact that there wasn't any sort of instruction, um, any sense of, of signage or narrative. Again, there aren't um, audio tracks to listen to, anything like this. Um, even uh, visiting, say, Dennis Seaver's house in London, you get uh, texts and you get the sense that you're going through a story and you're not told exactly uh, wh what's going on, but you're indirectly told some things. Whereas at Harpa Villa, probably because of my um, ignorance and lack of knowledge about um, Chinese mythology and Confucianism and Buddhism, um, you know, I didn't have as much opportunity, I guess, as a guest, as a novice in this space to understand it as I might like. And this is quite strange as well. I noted there was these exposed pipes just in the middle of um, this uh, walk that I was taking through these caverns. As you enter the Ten Courts of Hell, it has a similar effect, I think, of a, uh, a dark ride or a haunted house. So this makes um, this particular museum slash theme park that much more interesting, I believe. And so we're walking through now that uh, uh, space I just described, which is the Ten Courts of Hell. And this is the attraction, I think, at Harpaw Villa that has really given this space so much of its fame. And if you read a lot of internet websites, uh, you know, like Atlas Obscura websites that focus on strange restaurants or strange spaces or these fantasy worlds like the ones described in the Toshin book, this is what strikes people as so incredibly surreal and thus the name of my video surreal immersion today i don't think you expect to see these kinds of representations in any sort of themed or immersive space the exception of course would be any museum that deals with dark or disturbing history what i call generally dark theming so any um, history museum or immersive space that's dealing with um, the dark past genocide and very disturbing periods in history. In this case though, again, I think you can walk through other sections of this park 
and um, not see these kinds of representations. So it does have this sense of the surreal as you move through this space. And for me, Harpaw Villa is incredibly imaginative. And again, it is nostalgic. It's dated as you walk through the spaces. But it's like nothing you will ever see anywhere in the world. And I don't think I could say that there's a themed or immersive space anywhere that is as remarkable as this space. And in so many ways, and in many ways that actually defy my ability to describe them to you. And as we leave um, Hopar Villa, I hope you uh, did enjoy this interesting video feature of, um, I would say, one of the most curious, if not the most curious of immersive spaces that I've ever seen. So uh, please come back for additional video features uh, here in Singapore and in other places around the world.